Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to do a whiteboard coding interview question. So this question is all about taking in a matrix and finding the row with the maximum number of ones in the matrix. Okay, and as you'll see, there are multiple solutions to this problem, some better than others. Okay, so let's write down the problem. So we want to find the row with maximum number of ones. And you'll see I'm writing this with a pen because this is going to emulate that sort of whiteboard coding environment that you'll encounter during a coding interview. Okay, so to understand how this problem works, we're going to start with a few examples. Okay, so let's say we have as input, say a matrix, okay, which is actually a nested list. In other words, a list of lists. Okay, so let's say the matrix looks like this. So we have 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, this is our input list. So we want to find the row with the maximum number of ones. So by inspecting this visually, we can see that this is the row with the maximum number of ones. Okay, and so what row is this? Well, this would be row 0. This would be row 1, this would be row 2, and this would be row 3. Okay, so the answer is row 2. Okay, because this has the maximum number of 1s. It has 4 1s. Okay, so as output, we'd want to return 2. And so one important feature of this matrix is that the rows are sorted. So you can see that all the zeros come before all the ones. Okay, so each row is sorted. Okay, so let's just do another example so you understand the question. Okay, so as input, we have a matrix. And this has the entries 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this is a 5 by 5 matrix. And as you can see, this row is the row with the maximum number of 1s. So this is the answer, which is, again, 2. Okay, so the output would be 2. And you know what, let's just do another example just for fun. Okay, so as input, we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Okay, and the output, in this case, is 0. Okay, so the output is 0. And because this row has the maximum number of 1s, which is 2. Now, I want to recap that there are really three ways to approach these videos. Okay, so there are three approaches you can take. Okay, so approach number one would be to simply listen to the problem, just the problem statement, and then go and code the solution yourself. Okay, so that's number one. Listen to the problem statement and then code the solution yourself okay now that's the most difficult way to approach this now probably the reason you're watching this video is maybe you're not so great at coding interviews and you need a little bit of help so option number two would be to listen to the solution approach. So this is where we describe the solution in words. And so this is more like high level ideas without any code. Okay, so 
The second way to do this would be to listen to the approach to the solution and then code the solution yourself. Okay. Now the third way to do this, if you're really, really stuck on number one and number two, is to look at the pseudocode And this is the pseudocode that I present in these lectures on the whiteboard. And then from that pseudocode, it should be simple to code the solution yourself. Okay. So these are the three possible approaches going from most difficult to easiest. And obviously in a real interview, you're going to be doing number one. There's no number two and number three in an interview. So, you know, if you're at number three right now, your goal should be to get yourself to number two and then get yourself to number one because that's the real world. Number one is the real world. There's no, there's no second place and third place prize for this. Okay. And then I, I realized that um, in today's modern era of online courses where students are just given everything, you might think there's a number four to this. And so you might think number four would be to look at instructor's code and claim you could have done that yourself, okay? And so I see this a lot, um, especially on uh, certain websites. I won't name any names, but um, this, is not, this is not a viable solution, okay? There's no instructor when you go for a job interview. So there are really only three solutions to this, and I hope that you all strive for number one. Okay, so now let's start to think about how we might solve this problem. Okay, so for the first video, we're going to start with a very sort of intuitive solution, but it's a solution that's not that good, and you'll see why later. Okay, so again, we're going to do this all on the whiteboard or in this notebook with a pen to emulate how you would do this in a coding interview. Okay, so here's the idea. So I'm going to draw it out. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to loop through each row. Okay, so we'll loop through this row and then we'll look at this row and then we'll look at this row and so forth. And at each row, we're going to count the number of ones in that row, okay? And so by the end of this loop, we just keep track of which row had the maximum number of ones. And I think that's a pretty intuitive solution, okay? but. See, the important part is that's really easy to explain in words, but for some people, it's not so easy to put into code. And eventually, I said some people, but the thing is when the algorithm gets complicated enough, it's pretty difficult for pretty much everyone. Okay, so not just you, but we all have challenges putting these algorithms into code. Okay, but this one's pretty easy. So let's uh, see if we can do it. Okay, so let's start by writing a function. So def find row with max ones. And it's going to take in some matrix A. And we'll assume that A is properly formatted. Okay, so so that every row has the same number of elements. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll begin by initializing a variable to keep track of the max number of ones. Okay, so max ones, and currently we don't know. So we'll just set that to zero. And then we'll have a variable best row which we'll just initialize to minus one at first. So this is going to keep track of the index 
of the row with the maximum number of ones. Okay. And so the next step is to loop through each row. So we'll say for row in A. Okay, but we can't do this because we need to know the index of the row as well. Okay, so we'll do it like this. For I in row in enumerate A. Oh, and by the way, this is meant to be pseudocode, not actual Python. Although at the end of this, it may actually work in Python. So just keep that in mind. This is pseudocode. So it doesn't have to actually meet all the syntax requirements of the language. It just has to encode the idea and, and include most of the important parts. Okay, so at this point, we would like to count the ones in this row. Okay, and so how can we do that? Well, we'll loop through the row. Okay, so we'll say num1s. And I realize there are easier ways to do this in Python, but this is sort of the algorithmic way. Okay, so we'll loop through each element in the row. So for, let's say, C in row, we're simply going to increment num1s. by C. Okay, so how would this count the number of ones? Well, if C is zero, then it would just add zero. And if C is one, it would add one. So by the end of it, you'll just have the number of ones. Okay, and then once we're done this loop, we can check. If num ones is greater than max ones you know we should at least we should set this to minus one so that it at least chooses the first row if the matrix is full of zeros okay so if the number of ones is greater than the number of maximum number of ones then we'll just set this to the new max ones so max ones equals num ones. And we also set our best row to this row. Well, to the index of this row. Okay, and then once we're done this loop, we will have the maximum row index turn best row or the row with the maximum number of ones. Okay, so that should be pretty intuitive. Now, when you do these questions, the follow up question is always, well, what is the time complexity of this algorithm? So let's think about that. So basically, given a matrix, you have to loop through every single row. And for every row, you have to loop through every column. Okay, so if this is an M by N matrix, you're going to be looking at M times N elements. Okay, so this would be an O of M times N algorithm. Okay, so this is what we would call quadratic time complexity. Now, is this the best answer? The answer is no we can do better than this. So in the next few videos, we're going to talk about how we can improve this algorithm to shorten the time it takes to get this answer. But another exercise you should do is actually put this into code, right? Make sure this actually works, okay? Because it's one thing to write down your idea. It's another thing to get working code out of it. So please give that a try and I'll see you in the next video.